I bet you were frantic with worry until you got here. Oh, I was. I couldn't get here fast enough because it looked like everything was getting in my way and I couldn't realize what was going on. But I started running and screaming up and down the street until I got here. But I couldn't see my house until I got in the house. Mrs. Brooks, let me talk to your children here. Uh, some of them performed real heroically, and yes, I want to want to talk to them about it. Carol, first of all, you got your brothers and sisters uh, out of the house or helped get them out and across the street, is that right? Yes, it is. I was washing dishes, and all of a sudden the house was shaking, and I looked out the window, and our house was on fire, and I raced downstairs to get my sisters and brothers out, and I put them across the street, and I came back to get them some clothes to put on the shoes. I have distinct visual images of it. I had my still camera with me along with my video camera. Uh, and it was, a, it was a day that changed Wichita. Wichita was not ready for a crash of that size. When the plane hit, the concussion knocked me to the floor. I immediately got up, looked out the back window and saw the wall of flames coming from the plane. Those lucky enough to escape death described the horror. But many of those killed apparently never knew what hit them. It was a terrible scene. It really was. Earl Tanner was a fire captain and says the images haunt him to this day of house after house, body after body. There was a lady, or I assume a lady, in the kitchen. And then there was somebody in the bathtub who was taking a bath. And that was all covered with fuel and they just burned immediately. And then out in the backyard, there was two young kids on tricycles laid over, and they were also uh, victims. That was the Bolden's house. Parents Albert and Wilma, along with Denise, age six, Brenda, age five, and nine-month-old Leslie. It was really a, a bad scene because everywhere you looked was people. Meanwhile, rookie firefighter Alan Lister was at home two miles away from the scene. When I, when I heard him say on the radio that there had been a plane crash at, at 21st and Pius, what they had said, and, and that's when the adrenaline starts. And I went out and I looked at that smoke and I thought, I'm going. Lister found himself battling the biggest disaster of his career, a nightmare he had never imagined. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty amazing. It was surreal. You know, you just, just can't believe what you're seeing. The worst of it is things I really don't want to talk about too much, but was seeing the people who had been killed that didn't make it. The plane plunged into a vacant lot. The impact blasted a crater 15 feet deep, sending 32,000 gallons of jet fuel and fire cascading in a southwest direction. Fire crews had the flames out within an hour or so, but the damage had been done. The torrent of death and destruction left a trail of loss and heartbreak. I caught myself having a little girlfriend. We'd be on the side of the house kissing and stuff. And the next day, I know they'd burn up. They'd burn up, their whole family. The mother, daddy, and everybody. They, they was lived right across the street. And I, I didn't know how, what to think then. All I know, a lot of my friends had just disappeared. 